Today I'm working on an old mahogany bookcase. This is a little bookcase. It's nice and compact, which I like. I paid $15 for it in a thrift store, which wasn't too bad. It's got mahogany veneer over most of it. Although these pieces along the front edge are solid mahogany. The finish on the inside is in pretty good shape and I think I'll just leave that. But the finish on the outside is in bad shape so I'll be refinishing all of that. I think before I start removing the finish I want to fix this little chip in the veneer here. The piece, whoa, don't fall. The piece that came off was just barely attached before but now it has fallen off although it is I think still hanging on by a spider web or something like that maybe from this guy over here but now it's free so I'm just gonna glue that back on and I think for something like this I'm just gonna use super glue it'll be easy and fast and it'll stick just fine Okay, now I can start removing the finish, and I think I'm going to start by just uh, trying to scrape it off. Some of the most common questions I get are about scraping off finish. A lot of people seem to think that scraping somehow damages the wood. But it doesn't damage the wood if you do it correctly, and it's not hard to do it correctly. This particular scraper is a carbide scraper, and there are other scrapers that you can use, like uh, this type of scraper, or this type, uh, or even just a utility knife blade or a razor blade. And this works great actually for a lot of stuff, See, especially on an edge like that takes it right off. And you can use it on the flat parts too, but sometimes it's just easier to use a bigger one like this. I think I've used all of these at some point in my videos, and I tend to prefer this one most of the time. Uh, it's just a little easier, I find, sometimes to have a scraper you can hold like this than one like this. And then this one also works great, but it's obviously smaller than this, so this I usually use for smaller areas. And it's really not hard to do this without damaging the wood. Whoops, you do want to secure your piece. You just want to make sure that you don't catch one of these edges on the wood. Then you will damage it, then you'll dig into it. But other than that, it's really not hard. And not all finishes scrape this easily though, I will say that. This is an old lacquer finish, probably from the, I don't know, 50s, somewhere around there, 1950s. And uh, usually these tend to scrape pretty easily, especially if they've been worn down already. Something later, like maybe in the 70s and up, might not scrape as well if it's not a straight lacquer like this, if it's some kind of polyester or polyurethane or something, I don't know, might not scrape easier. So not everything is going to be easy, but just like life. 
Um, but usually this type of finish is relatively easy. Also, what I hear a lot from viewers is, why don't you just sand the finish off instead of damaging the wood with that scraper? And in my opinion, sandpaper, especially on an orbital sander or some kind of motorized sander, has a lot more potential to do damage than the scraper does, especially if you're working with veneer, which this is, at least this part. This part is solid mahogany, but this part's veneer. It's really easy to go through the veneer with a electric sander, especially on the edges. So in my opinion, this is way safer than sandpaper, also faster usually. Probably the very safest method is probably a chemical stripper, but it can be hard to find one that works well uh, unless you have a professional stripping shop. And the ones that are available, they do sometimes work, but often you need to leave it on there for quite a while. And a lot of times this is just quicker. The scraping is done and I do want to do a little bit of sanding on it. But first I want to try and fix some of these little dents that are all over the bookcase, starting with this one. And I'm just gonna use a water and soldering iron and try to steam them out. It's already come up quite a bit. All right, that's a lot better. I think that'll do. I'll move on to another one. a lot better. There's a small chunk taken out of the bottom of this piece here and I think I'm gonna fill that in just with some epoxy putty. Helps to add a little bit of water to this when you're trying to shape it. Okay, so that's really close. So once it dries, I should have minimal sanding to do. 
I let this dry overnight and now I'm going to use some 180 grit sandpaper to gently take it down a bit and level it out. So this is obviously nowhere near the color of the wood, so I'm going to have to stain that. And actually there's a little bit of epoxy and a grain line here. I'm just going to dig that out too. Don't need that in there. I've got some gel stain here and the color is candlelight. And I think it's going to at least be a good start to get the color right. Yeah, that's pretty good. So it's probably a little bit light, but I'm going to just leave it there for now and then put some finish on. And then if it still looks too light, then I'll put a little bit more on. There's a split here in this piece of wood. And this bottom piece is a piece of solid mahogany. So I think a little super glue in there is going to hold that just fine. Oops. Oops. Having some trouble. Try that again. Drop some accelerator on it. Give it a little scrape to smooth it out. That'll work. There are some really small chips in the veneer on the edge here. And I'm going to try filling those with some super glue and some sanding dust that I collected. Well, as often happens with this technique, the super glue and sanding dust is often a little bit darker than most of the rest of the veneer, but it does match the darker flecks in the veneer. So I'm just going to leave it. I think it looks all right to me. Time for the top coat, and I'm just going to go with a clear shellac.
The shellac is dry, and now I'm just going to go over it with some steel wool and wax to finish it off. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.